Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Emily Sue. And I'm Edna Zaire. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. HKTV boss suspends mobile television launch and scraps new programs after license warning from government. Malaysia identifies passenger with fake passport on missing flight as Iranian with no terror links. China's central banker announces plans to free up deposit interest rates. HKTV boss Ricky Wong has stopped producing new programs and delayed the launch of his mobile television service because of new licensing requirements imposed by the government. He's complaining of victimization by the government after he was earlier denied a free TV license and sees no way out for his company now. And he's considering taking the government to court. It seems Reiki Wong just can't get ahead in his ambition to become a television tycoon. The embattled HKTV boss came out today to deliver what he called very bad news to his employees and the people of Hong Kong. We will not be able to start up our channel on the 1st of July, he announced. I don't know when we can or if we still can in the future. Wong has suspended the production of all new programs, and the launch of his mobile television service planned for July is now in limbo. That's after he was informed by the Communications Authority that his mobile television channel must have a free-to-air or pay television license. A letter from the authority warned that if HKTV's mobile service reaches more than 5,000 households, it will require one of those licenses under the broadcasting ordinance. Wang lashed out at the requirement as ridiculous and the reasoning behind it as rubbish. He complained that the government has never regulated mobile TV operators before. The Communications Authority also said the format HKTV is planning to use to transmit its programs, DTMB, may violate broadcasting laws. Wang insisted that the format is legal and accused the government of changing policies as they wish, depending on whom they're dealing with. Well, I think it's a very simple answer. Yes. How, what technology can I use such that I can implement our broadcasting plan legally? Despite the setback, Wong said he has no plans to sack any of his workers. He previously fired 320 staff when his application for a free-to-air television license was rejected last October. Regarding the morale, well, I think you have to ask my staff. I wish. We are a great team. We have been, I've been working with them in the past two years. I wish they enjoy working with me, and I look forward to working with them in the future. He's seeking legal advice on whether he should take the government to court. After being denied a free television license, Wong lost the rental of Hilltop radio stations from TVB in January. The latest blow now leaves him on a further collision course with the government. Vietnamese and Malaysian authorities have started searching on land for the plane that went missing on its way to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur on Saturday. Malaysian officials are playing down the possibility of a terror attack after identifying a passenger with a stolen passport as an Iranian seeking asylum in Europe. ATV's Ben Award reports. After days of fruitless sweeps of the sea between Malaysia and Vietnam, both countries are now widening their searches. Vietnam says it's looking for the plane on land too, while Malaysia says it's extended its hunt to the Strait of Malacca. They will be joined later this week by Taiwanese ships that left port last night, while mainland ships are scouring the South China Sea. Thailand has also joined the search. Meanwhile, Malaysian authorities are still trying to work out how passengers using stolen passports managed to get through immigration and on the plane. At a press conference this afternoon, officials said they doubt the stolen passport holders were terrorists. To date, we have uncovered two passengers which uh, was travelling on a stolen passport. Okay? And uh, we have identified one of them. And uh, this one that we have identified is an Iranian by the name of Porea Noor Mohammed Mehrad. He is 19 years old. It's believed Mehrad was using the passport to enter Europe, where he planned to seek asylum or live as an illegal alien and was probably not a terrorist who wanted to blow up the plane. We have been uh, uh, checking his background and uh, we believe that he is not likely to be a member of any terrorist group. 
and we uh, we believe that he is trying to migrate to Germany. But the identity of the other stolen passport holder is still unknown, as is the cause of the plane's disappearance. We are looking into four areas. One is hijacking, two, sabotage, three, psychological problem of the passengers and crew, and four, personal problem among the passengers and the crew. The police are studying the behavioural patterns of all the passengers from security camera footage taken at Kuala Lumpur Airport. The plane, carrying 239 people, vanished from radar screens on Saturday morning without a distress signal or radio contact indicating a problem. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. The first group of people from Beijing whose relatives were on board the missing Malaysian airliner arrived in Kuala Lumpur today. Malaysia Airlines is offering 31,000 yuan in condolence money to each of the families, but they're more concerned about the fate of their loved ones. ATV's Arthur Urkeola reports. After more than three days of agony waiting for news of their loved ones, a dozen relatives of the missing passengers from Beijing arrived in the Malaysian capital this morning hoping to find answers. Nine Chinese and three Indian nationals were in the group that left Beijing at about 1.30 a.m., becoming the first to take up the airline's offer to fly bereaved relatives to Kuala Lumpur. Chinese diplomats said despite their grief, the relatives remain strong and the embassy would ensure that they are taken care of. Malaysia Airlines has found hotel accommodation for those coming from Beijing. The plane was carrying 239 passengers and crew, 153 of them Chinese nationals. At the international airport in Kuala Lumpur, relatives of the 38 Malaysians on board the missing flight were also desperate for answers. This father of one passenger said he hopes his son is alive and well, but he's resigned himself to accepting any outcome. Rosma Mansour, wife of Prime Minister Najib Razak, offered some words of comfort to the distressed families. The relatives still in Beijing have learned that Malaysia's flag carrier has offered condolence money of 31,000 yuan for each passenger, but the affected families say the payment is not important. This woman who returned to Beijing from a trip abroad after finding out that her father was on the missing plane said money won't bring back their loved ones. Malaysia Airlines had prepared a special flight to fly more relatives to Kuala Lumpur from Beijing this afternoon, but the arrangement was scrapped without explanation. The airline only said another flight to the Malaysian capital would leave Beijing early tomorrow morning. The airline has assigned a special task force to take care of the families in Beijing and is providing counseling to relatives and crew. It has promised to do whatever it can to ensure basic needs, comfort and psychological support are available. Arthur Rikiola, ATV News. China's central banker has announced plans to free up deposit rates in the next two years due to pressure from market forces. He said this will open up opportunities for mainland businesses, but warned that interest rates may rise at the start. Here's Ben O'Rourke. China's central banker, Zhou Xiaotuan, says there's enough drive in the market to start liberalizing interest rates in the world's second largest economy. The governor of the People's Bank of China briefed the media on the latest situation on the sidelines of the National People's Congress session in Beijing this morning. The variety of merging businesses and modes of operations will push forward the process, he said. The deposit rate will be liberalized, and it should be the last step of interest rate liberalization. Zhou said many other interest rates have already been freed and deposit rates should follow suit, but not for a year or two. He added that liberalization of the rates will open up new opportunities in the market due to changes in management styles and micro-control adjustments. This, Zhou said, may bring higher returns in the short term and could lead to interest rate rises. However, due to competition and the distribution of resources, interest rates will gradually level off. The central bank chief also said Beijing still has a lot of homework to do to make the yuan an international currency. And he said more time is needed to look into scrapping the daily conversion limit of 20,000 yuan for permanent Hong Kong residents. He explained that specific policies need to be in place to ensure the smooth working of the system. The daily conversion limit is seen as a hindrance to Hong Kong's plans to be the dominant center for offshore yuan trading. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. 
The MTRC has announced an 8% jump in its total revenue, although underlying profit fell 10% in 2013. The head of the firm is insisting that services have been the best in the last seven years, despite a recent string of disruptions. Here's Arthur Erkeola. Before announcing the MTRC's performance for 2013, the company's CEO began by acknowledging the recent string of problems. We are, uh, of course, concerned about the recent service disruptions which have inconvenienced our passengers. And we have already taken steps to rectify the faults and to make improvements. But Walder insisted that the MTRC has still maintained a world-class service, pointing out that $5 billion is spent every year on maintenance. If you look at the year 2013, uh, day in and day out, literally 8,000 trains every weekday, we had the best performance in 2013 that we have had uh, since the rail merger. Uh, this is truly world-leading performance. 99.9 percent on-time performance means that on average for somebody who uses the MTR 1,000 times in 2013 that they would experience one delay uh, on the system. The MTRC also addressed concerns that the government may revoke its rights to develop property after its failure to tender out two sites in Tin Shui Wai and Tai Wai. But MTR has over its 35-year history had a very successful program of developing property in Hong Kong uh, that has worked through uh, some difficult times, uh, the, the 97 financial crisis, the, the SARS crisis in, in 2003, and I have every expectation that it will continue to be a, a successful uh, property program for, for MTR. The railway operator's total revenue for 2013 increased 8 percent to $38.7 billion. But underlying profits saw a 10% drop from $9.6 billion in 2012 to $8.6 billion last year. The company is paying a final dividend of $0.67 cents per share, bringing the total dividend for the year up to $0.92. Cents. That represents a 16.5% increase over 2012. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. Pan-Democrats have been urged to accept Beijing's universal suffrage proposal for now so that political reform can move forward. The minister in charge agreed that changes can be made later to satisfy them. Constitutional Affairs Minister Raymond Tam today responded to an idea aimed at prodding Beijing and Pan-Democrats to narrow their differences on political reform. Mainland academics and pro-establishment lawmakers have urged moderates in the democratic camp to accept Beijing's universal suffrage proposal for now, leaving the door open for further reform after the chief executive election in 2017. But for the coming election itself, the nomination committee will have the sole authority to name candidates for the city's top job. Han Democrats have been pressing for civil or political party nomination. The academics said it shouldn't be assumed that the way to set up the nomination committee and the nomination methods will remain unchanged after 2017, saying those in charge in Beijing could be more open-minded and enlightened on constitutional development further down the road. Tam said this is worth considering. He said he and other officials will look into the issue if drafting a law guaranteeing the right to modify electoral methods after 2017 can help reach a consensus between opposing sides. But he evaded questions on whether the government is ready to compromise with the pan-democratic camp. Tam was also quizzed on Central Policy Unit head Xiu Xinpo's suggestion to set up a liaison office between the administration and LegCo. The think tank chief said the existing cabinet isn't big enough to help the government lobby lawmakers, but Tam rejected the proposal. I have joined the government for 27 years, and to lobby support um, uh, in the Legislative Council is the bread and butter duties of, or day in day out duties of, of me, of mine. And I believe that it is actually the duty of SAL government officials to do that, rather than anyone else. Before attending his weekly cabinet meeting, Chief Executive Lan Chunying sidestepped Xu's remarks.
Liang merely said the city enjoys a high degree of autonomy, and the government is responsible for canvassing support from lawmakers. An elderly woman is fighting for her life in hospital after being severely injured by her husband, who jumped to his death from the Wang Taixin building. Police say the couple had records of mental illness and argued hours before the husband became violent. A 66-year-old woman was rushed to Queen Elizabeth Hospital this morning after she was badly injured in an attack blamed on her husband. The victim was admitted in a critical condition with severe head injuries and several knife wounds on her body. The police were alerted by the couple's maid when she found the woman lying in a pool of blood on her bed in the fourth-floor flat at Wong Tao Home Estate in Wong Tai Sin at around 8.30 this morning. A cleaner later found the body of her 70-year-old husband on the first-floor terrace of the public housing estate. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Wang Tai's assistant district commander Chao Tak Choi said the couple had an argument yesterday evening, but according to their maid, both went to sleep afterwards. Based on a preliminary investigation, police suspect the man hit his wife on the head with a hard object at around 2 a.m. before taking a lift to a higher floor and jumping to his death. Chow did not elaborate on the knife wounds but said the weapon or weapons used in the attack had not been found. He confirmed that both the husband and wife had a record of mental illness. Police are continuing their investigation into the case which has been classified as suicide and severe wounding. It was the latest in a list of recent domestic disputes that ended in tragedy. In November, a 43-year-old man jumped to his death from a building in Zhengquanou after attacking and injuring his wife with a meat cleaver while she was asleep. A day earlier, police arrested a 64-year-old man accused of attacking and killing his Vietnamese girlfriend with a chopper in their Samshui Po flat. In other local news, the Red Cross has launched an urgent appeal for blood donations. And a hundred people have been evacuated after a fire broke out on the roof of a government building in Wan Chai. Firefighters rushed to Wan Chai Tower shortly after 1 p.m. on receiving reports of smoke coming out from the lifts. 100 people in the Harbour Road building were evacuated to safety. Firemen also freed 13 people trapped in a lift. One woman reported feeling unwell but did not need to go to hospital. A blaze in the lift machine room on the rooftop was put out after 45 minutes. A former managing partner of a consulting firm hired by the government to report on the issuing of new free-to-air television licenses is suing the company for more than $10 million in bonuses, shares and unpaid leave. Jenny Ng claims she was asked to resign earlier this year after the firm Value Partners received two letters accusing her of breaching confidentiality. This came after she told the media that the government had used a report from her consultancy as a shield against criticism for not granting a license to HKTV last year. I do not have evidence to link whether those people are uh, from the government. But the second letter or the second person for sure is, is not the, his real name and not his real identity. I mean, oh, everything he showed in that letter is not logical, cannot be explained. Ng added that after her company said she had resigned of her own free will, it issued a dismissal letter to avoid paying money due to her, claiming she had breached employment terms. The Hong Kong Red Cross is making an urgent appeal for blood donations. Despite frequent appeals to the public over the past three months, its blood infantry remains at a low level. The Red Cross says the consistent cold weather, coupled with rising demand and low donor turnout, has left its infantry unable to return to normal levels. Large amounts of blood have been used in recent major operations. The Red Cross can be contacted on 2710-1234. Time now for sports with Bo Lang. And a major upset at Indian Wells. Yes, Rafael Nadal is out. The Spaniard, whose world number lo one lost to Ukraine's Alexander Dolgopolov at the BNP Paribas Open in California. But Andy Murray and